That was President Biden claiming once again that the U.S. would defend Taiwan if China invades the island. The Chinese foreign ministry is saying that Beijing has lodged a complaint as a result of that interview, urging the U.S. to handle Taiwan-related issues, quote, carefully and properly and to not send the wrong signals. Joining me right now is the Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts. Kevin, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much. Your reaction to Joe Biden's remarks last night. Well, my reaction, Maria, is I'm glad I'm not in the White House communications office. They have to clean up practically everything this president says. Unfortunately, when it comes to foreign policy and particularly when it comes to the Chinese Communist Party. So my reaction is grave concern. The situation geopolitically with the Chinese and Russians meeting with Xi probably going to serve as leader of the CCP for life ought to concern every American, every person on Earth. You know, to to cut to the chase here, Maria, that we're not alarmists at the Heritage Foundation. We are sober, however, about the reality of this. And the president's remarks don't give us any confidence that the leader of the free world is up to the task. Yeah, I mean, it was supposed to be, you know, strategic ambiguity, but the president has not been ambiguous at all. He keeps saying that troops would defend Taiwan. It, it's terrible. I mean, you, you know me and Heritage well enough to know we're, we're all for supporting the Taiwanese, but we're also for sovereignty at home, and that is including in Taiwan. The Taiwanese will decide whether they are going to be independent or not, and this position of strategic ambiguity has served us well. The president, however, now for the third time has talked about American troops being on the ground in Taiwan. That is not our position, and, and let me be clear, this isn't a Republican or a Democrat position. This is an American position. He needs to be focused. Biden needs to be focused on making sure that American war material is, is built here at home so that if we do get into a situation where the Chinese saber rattling turns into an invasion or a near invasion, we can count on our war goods being built here at home. Yeah. Let me get your take on China's goals here. Former director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures to discuss, to discuss this rising threat, this adversary. Watch what he said. Joe Biden says one thing and does something else. So they've been as friendly to China as you possibly can be. Uh, you know, the China threat is rising. Uh, what, you know, uh, President Xi and President uh, uh, Putin met this week. And what's frightening about that is not that Russia and China are working together. They've done that before. It's that they're doing it openly and notoriously. Kevin, your reaction, it's pretty incredible that you see, you know, uh, Xi Jinping meeting with Vladimir Putin in the open. You know, it's clear that they have a partnership despite uh, the death and destruction Putin has created in Ukraine. No, that's right. Two quick points, Maria, and they're very important. The first is for people who may not remember or may be younger, the Russians and Chinese don't historically get along. So that meeting, especially out in the open, is sending a signal to America and to our weak President Biden. But the second thing is we need to read between the lines and understand that the Chinese are financing Russia's war in Ukraine in exchange for cheap gas, which obviously is helping the Chinese. And obviously what they're getting is a tax agreement by the Russians to provide that cheap gas as they continue to saber rattle in Taiwan. But the context for all of this, Maria, is energy. If the United States wants to defeat the Chinese Communist Party before there's even open warfare with them, the best thing we can do is stop flirting with this unsustainable Green New Deal and instead ramp up American energy production. That actually, as we know from a few years ago, helps not only Americans, especially in an inflationary environment, but it also helps promote freedom around the world. That's the thing that President Biden needs to be talking about in these interviews he does. Yeah, it's all these mixed messages, because as they push this ESG and and climate change agenda, they're pushing Americans to buy goods that are made in China. OK, that's where the batteries are made. That's where so much of this green agenda is produced. Meanwhile, you've got the Pentagon reportedly intensifying efforts to push defense companies to limit the use of Chinese supplies. Earlier this month, the Defense Department halted deliveries of new F-35 jets made by Lockheed Martin after discovering that they contain China produced metal alloys. Kevin, I mean, then you've got stories of the U.S. buying drones that are Chinese made. 
Why would we do this when we know the surveillance campaigns of the Chinese Communist Party have intensified over the years uh, and that surveillance is on American citizens? Well, I know this will come as a shock to you, Maria, but Washington, once again, is a generation behind the will of the American people. The American people for years have known to stop dealing with the Chinese Communist Party. I applaud any American company, especially in the national defense industry, who's come to their senses and put the nation's interest above their own profit motive. It's really important that we understand that none of us want war, of course. That is a a bipartisan statement. We're going to have war with the Chinese Communist Party this century until and unless the United States and the American people and especially our Washington elite say enough is enough. Enough with the K Street lobbyists. Enough with all of it. We have to put America's interests first. I I think that's right. Unfortunately, you've got people like uh, Tony Podesta, the brother of John Podesta. He's the main lobbyist for Huawei. I mean, really, Huawei is the vehicle that the CCP uses to surveil Americans. And Tony Podesta is the lobbyist. I know. People people here in Washington don't think very highly of me, the lobbyist types, when I say your K Street lobbying firms should not be doing business for the CCP. It's a wildly popular belief outside the Beltway. We are going to continue to ramp that up, that, that, that antipathy against that by, by American people. Yeah, we'll be watching that. And we've been reporting about how uh, the thrift fund has all these companies in it uh, and they want uh, government employees to buy Chinese companies that may very well turn around and be the ones that that attack America. Kevin, thanks very much for your leadership.